Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We'll continue with yesterday's lecture. We started with the topic of infanticide very briefly going through what we did yesterday. I told you infanticide basically is the deliberate and unlawful destruction of a child under the age of 1 year. We talked about who an infant is, what a fetus is and who a neonate is. I also told you that in our law according to the Pakistan Penal Code infanticide falls under the section of 302 PPC. I elaborated the different reasons for infanticide, why uh, infants are killed and causes of death in infants which I told you were, were natural causes, accidental or criminal causes which included acts of omission, not doing something you were supposed to do or acts of commission doing something deliberately which you're not which, which you were not supposed to do hence i told you what uh, has to be proved in this case is whether the bond was viable or not whether if it was viable it was capable of a separate existence was it born alive if born alive for how long did it live and then ultimately if it the infant died what was the cause of death in that case we also talked about three different scenarios three different situations the live born the still born and the dead born live born who after complete expulsion show, showed any sign of life still born died during the birth process and dead born died within the uterus of the um, mother so Establishing whether the child was born alive or not. Basically, I told you the law presumes that every newborn child found dead is a case of a dead born until the contrary is proved. And the burden of proof of life birth is placed on the prosecution. Right, going further. Today we'll talk about how to proceed with the autopsy of an infant. The process is almost the same as in the case of adults. We have a problem when it is a newborn child where you have to differentiate if the child even took a single breath or not or died prior to birth. So what are the things that we're going to be considering? Subsequently, look at the clothes, any wrappings, look at the general appearance of the baby, maturity data, any malformations and birth injuries, the state of the umbilical cord and the state of the placenta how we'll deal with each of these one by one number one is the clothes and the wrappings uh how what will they do basically they go oxer it happens okay the police bring a fetus from the garbage bin yeah a newborn child tha, an infant tha, kisi shopper mein hai, kisi mein hai, wo aapke paas le aate hai to help in identifying the baby so one of uh, you all know one of the things of identification is to assess the age of the child right and then next is to determine if the child was live born or not so any of these things the clothes the wrappings they can help in the identity of the baby the bags the blankets or the baby is uh, covered in the mother's clothes all of these will help you in identifying the uh, mother of the baby then go to the external autopsy findings. You're not opening up uh, the infant as yet. First, we're looking at him externally. And what are we going to be looking at? Dealing with these again, step by step. These are the same steps that we follow. General physical examination, the postmortem changes, the injuries, and any foreign bodies that are present on the body are collected. What are these individually? Let's go into the detail. For example, in the general physical examination, you, you all know, all of you who have younger brothers and sisters, is covered by a white cheesy material, that is the Bernex caseosa, which cannot be removed easily. Generally, it is removed after bathing the baby. So, its presence or absence may indicate if the child was uh, washed or not. Look for any marks of violence over the nose, over the mouth, over the neck. They may indicate smoothing or throttling. It's very easy to smooth a child. It's just the palm of the hand that can be used. Aram se jo hai haath cover kar sakta hai, the nose and the mouth. Uh, look around the neck. Look for any other marks of violence over the head 
or any other part of the body. Look for any foreign bodies up the nostrils, down the throat, in the other passages or any other natural orifices. Look at them in detail and observe for any foreign bodies. What can you assess from the maturity data? It generally helps to determine the intrauterine age. Uh, you all know there are uh, certain parameters that are set. For example, the newborn baby has a uh, crown hill length of about 48 to 52 centimeters, a crown lump, rump length of 28 to 32 centimeters, head circumference 30 to 35, and a general weight, average weight normally, is 2.5 to 3.3 kilograms. Now, in the intrauterine uh, state, how will you determine the age of that fetus, first of all? Pele intrauterine pe aate ho, extra uterine pe abad mein aate ho. Intrauterine mein aap kaise determine kar sakte ho? Again, we dealt with this in the chapter of personal identity. Ye basically aap ke liye revision hai. What happens is, you know, there are two rules over here. There is the Hess's rule and the Morrison's rule. The Hess's rule is before the fifth month of gestation. Morrison's rule is after the fifth month of gestation. Hess's rule mein kya hota hai? It means, theoretically, it is the square of months of gestation gives the length of the fetus in centimeters up to the fifth month. And after that, Morrison's rule applies. Now, practically, how do we apply it? When the police takes a fetus, how do we determine that this fetus age is what age? What are we going to be doing? You measure the length of the fetus. If the length of the fetus is 25 centimeters or less, take the square root and you will come up roughly with the month of gestation of the fetus. For example, if the length is 16 centimeters, take the square root, fourth month of intrauterine life. Okay? Is it there are 20 centimeters? It's between fourth and fifth month of intrauterine life. On the other hand, if 25 centimeters is zyada hai, let us suppose it's about 35 centimeters. Divide 35 by 5, you will come up with 7 months of intrauterine life. Okay? 7 months, our age of viability begini jati hai. This is how you calculate the age of a fetus during the intrauterine life. These are the two rules that you use, the Hess's rule and the Morrison's rule. Other indicators, which you normally see in a newborn child, in a full-term baby, you have seen that when a child is born, the pediatrician does measurements to check the normal uh, uh, measurements of that child, its length, kya hai, weight, kya hai, head circumference, hair, jo hoti hai, long hair, lanugo, soft fine hair over the shoulders, hoti hai. vernix case, I have talked about you before, their face has no wrinkles, the nails usually are protruding beyond the fingertips. Umbilical cord fleshy hoti hai. Testes have de descended into the scrotum. Muconium jo hota hai. Wo present hota hai. Jo ke nikal da. It's greenish. Usually comes out uh, in the pamper of the child. And ossification centers. This is very important. In the lower end of the femur and the upper end of the tibia. Ye indicate karta hai. Full term mature baby ko. Then you look at the changes of decomposition. These changes are similar to those in adults. Early changes are hai, late changes are hai, very late changes are hai. Usi tara hota hai, primary relaxation, rigor mortis, secondary relaxation aa jata hai, putrefaction aa jata hai, and then agus colonization mein chala jata hai banda. <coughs> so, now what happens usually in a newborn infant, usually they are sterile. So, in stillbirth, stillbirth means that the bacteria have not entered into the body. So putrefaction in this case occurs from outside to inside. Jabke normally aapne dekha tha, you were also studied, ke putrefaction normally occurs from within the body to outside discoloration shuru hoti hai. Is me stillborn child mein, kyunke usne respire nahi kiya, bacteria andar nahi gaye. Is liye jo putrefactive changes hoti hai, from outside to within the body jati hai. Uh, you can see these pictures, the upper two are of putrefaction, the lower two of maceration, which we also discussed in the previous lecture. Putrefaction is the opposite of maceration, aseptic autolysis, maceration, which I was talking of maceration, maceration is aseptic autolysis. In this, the discoloration is usually reddish, pinkish, 
ब्लेब्स आर फॉर्म्ड स्किन स्लिपिड साइन आ जाता है इसमें स्वीटिश रैंसिड से स्मेल आती है एंड इट इज द रिवर्स इन द केस ऑफ पुट्रिफेक्शन जिसमें फाउल स्मेल आती है ब्लैक इश ग्रीनिश डिसकलरेशन होती है एंड बलॉटमेंट ऑफ द बॉडी हो जाती है ठीक है सो दे आर ऑपोजिट ऑफ वन अनदर बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस और द एबसेंस ऑफ बैक्टीरिया लुक फॉर एनी वे आर स्टिल ऑन दर्नल एग्जामिनेशन एक्सटर्नल एग्जामिनेशन में और हम मजीद क्या देखेंगे लुक फॉर एनी मेलफॉर्मेशन एनी बर्थ इंजरीज दैट मे नॉट हैव बीन केपेबल ऑफ लेटिंग दैट इन्फेंट लीड अ सेपरेट एग्जिस्टेंस जिसकी वजह से उसकी डेथ हो सकती हो उसको नोट करो एस्पेशली देन लुक एट द चेंजेस इन द चेस्ट माइंड यू अभी हमने ओपन अप नहीं की बॉडी अभी हम एक्सटर्नल एग्जामिनेशन पे हैं it is just like when you go into the medicine ward and you examine the patient you told to sit uh, stand at the foot end of the patient and look at the chest isi tarah aap pehle externally observe karo chest of that infant respired and unrespired mein differences aayenge obviously the diameter will be more in the respired lung as compared to the unrespired circumference bhi more hogi aur intercostal space ka distance zyada hoga respired lung mein as compared to the Unrespired lungs. Look for any changes in the umbilical cord. अब आपको पता है कि changes in the umbilical cord भी determine कर सकते हैं कि कितनी देर वो infant जिंदा रहा वो new नेट जिंदा रहा Those of you who have seen younger brothers and sisters or your brothers and sisters have younger children, आपने देखा हुआ है कि जब बच्चा पैदा होता है there's a stump of the umbilical cord over there. They crush it with the artery forceps. उसमें अक्सर spirit डालते हैं and आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ग्रेजुअली वो चेंज करता है कलर और हील करता है एंड इवेंचुअली अराउंड सेवेंथ टू द टेंथ डे इट फॉल्स ऑफ सो इवन बाय लुकिंग एट द चेंजेस इन दैट यू कैन डिटरमिन द एज ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल ऑफ दूनिट वन दूनिट डाइड सेकेंडली आप ये भी डिटरमिन कर सकते हो कि ये हॉस्पिटल बर्थ थी या नहीं थी प्रॉपरली properly artery forceps apply हुए हुए क्रश हुई हुई इसका मतलब है अटेंडेड बर्थ है ये राइट एंड दिस इज वॉट आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू के हाउ कैन यू डिटर्मिन द टाइम सिंस डेथ इन दैट न्यूनेट इफ दैट न्यूनेट हैज कम टू यू एक्सटर्नल एग्जामिनेशन पे बाकी भी चीज़ें आपने देखी वाइल एग्जामिनिंग द एम्बलाइकल कॉर्ड आप देखते हो कि किस स्टेज में है ऑफ हीलिंग एंड यू कैन डिटर्मिन कि वो कितनी देर सर्वाइव किया ऑब्वियसली ये चेंजेस तब आएंगी जब बच्चा जिंदा था जब मर गया फिर तो ख़त्म हो जाएंगी सीज हो जाएंगी ये चेंजेस सो यू कैन डिटर्मिन कि वो कितनी देर जिंदा रहा था देन यू ओपन अप द बॉडी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द हेड हेड में हम कैसे खोलते हैं हम चार इंसीजन्स मीन्स वी ओपन एट फ्राम मास्टोड टू मास्टोड एंड फ्रॉम फ्रंट टू बैक चार फ्लैप्स देते हैं बेसिकली लुक फॉर एनी इंजरीज एनी चीज ऑफ द मेनी इंजीज एनी हेमरेजेस और लेसरेशन देन ओपन द माउथ लुक इन टू द इंटीरियर ऑफ द माउथ ऑब्जर्व द नेक फॉर एनी इंजरीज लुक एट द शेप ऑफ द थॉरेक्स एंड अब हम थॉरेक्स लंग्स में देखने लगे हैं ठीक है लुक फॉर द लुक एट द कलर ऑफ द लंग्स लुक वे द लंग्स लुक एट द कंसिस्टेंसी ठीक है फील दे कंसिस्टेंसी किस तरह का है लुक एट द हार्ट नोट द कलर ऑफ द ब्लड इन इट एबडम में नोट द पोजिशन ऑफ द डायफ्राम एग्जामिन द कॉन्टेंट्स इन द इंटेस्टाइंस एंड इन द स्टमक लुक फॉर एनी प्रेजेंस ऑफ मिल्क एनी प्रेजेंस ऑफ ब्लड फ्लूड म्यूकस और एमनियोटिक फ्लूड एंड द रेड इन स्टेस जनरली होता है कि दे इज अ जेनेटिनस मटीरियल विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द मिडल ईयर बिफोर बर्थ लेकिन With respiration, the sphincter at the pharyngeal end relaxes and air replaces that gelatinous material within a few hours. ये भी एक test use होता है. Usually, usually नहीं perform होता. ज़्यादातर you go for the lung flotation test. What is that? I'll be telling you shortly. Then now we've opened up. First was externally looking at the chest. Then is now looking at the lungs, respired lungs. और अनरिस्पायर्ड लंग्स में क्या डिफरेंस होगा रिस्पायर्ड ऑब्वियसली आर गोइंग टू बी लार्जर इन साइज एंड दे इज अ मोल्टेड अपियरेंस अगर आप प्रैक्टिकली इफ यू गेट द चांस टू सी अ लंग उसमें पैची पैची सी अपियरेंस आती है रिस्पायर्ड लंग में जबकि डीप वायलेट है इन द अनरिस्पायर्ड लंग कंसिस्टेंसी क्रेपिटेंट इलास्टिक एंड स्पॉन्जी होती है इन द रिस्पायर्ड लंग 
and obviously the edges are going to be rounded. Air sacs are going to be visible in the respired lung and the cut surfaces will show froth on squeezing. Lung flotation test is going to be positive. What is this test? We'll be talking about it. And on microscopy, the alveoli are expanded. What are the confirmatory tests now that we do? There are two, three tests that we perform. One is the Plaquettes test, which generally deals with the weight of the respired and the unrespired lung. Unrespired lung is 1 by 70th of the weight of the fetus, whereas respired is 1 by 35 the weight of the fetus. The lung flotation test, we're going to be, we are going to be dealing with it in the next slide. Stomach bowel test ka matlab hai, air, is air present in the stomach and the intestines? You look for that, obviously sucking ki wajah se jo hai, hawa andar peet mein chali jati hai. So, this is the stomach bowel test and the histological examination. What is the hydrostatic test? How can you perform it? This is generally most reliable. What is it? The basic iska principle is that the unrespired lung, the specific gravity of the unrespired lung is more as compared to the specific gravity of a respired lung. Respired lung is lighter than water. Hota hai. Non respired lung ko agar ab balti pani me dalogi ye sink kar jayegi jabke respired lung generally float karega. A piece of liver is used as a control in that. So, what we do is uh, take a portion of a, the lung, dip it in a bucket of water with a control of a piece of liver. Agar respired lung hai, it will float. Unrespired hai, to it will sink. Here you take it out, take a piece of sponge. Press it over uh, in that sponge and again place it in that bucket. Respired air, to phir bhi float karega. Kyun float karega? Kyunke residual air jo hai, wo a nikal ti nahi hai. Right? So this is the lung flotation test. However, there are some limitations to the hydrostatic test. For example, you can get a false positive test if there is accumulation of putrefying gases. Gases, aapko pata hai, uh, putrefaction mein gases produce hoti hai. So, those gases may also cause, uh, give a false positive result or air pushed into the lungs by artificial respirators. Artificial respiration karne ki koshish ki gai, uski vajah se bhi ho sakta hai. Or a false negative test can be observed in atelectasis ya pneumonic consolidation. Both of these conditions making the lung heavier, making it sink. And obviously looking at the histology. Histology में क्या होता है? Unrespired lung का जो होता है, basically lining cuboidal होती है. जब air entry हो जाएगी, तो it becomes flattened into a pavement-like epithelium. So, uh, this is uh, an autopsy that came to us. A, a body was brought to us. It was in, packed in a box. You can see, obviously, कि ये जो है, Identity can be determined from the blankets. The child was wearing clothes. Pamper was wearing clothes. And you can note one thing that there is a tag on his pair. This means that this was a hospital birth. Thi. And there is something written over here which can help in identification of this infant, of this new neonate. And on opening, you examine the thorax and the abdomen. Look at the stomach. Is there any milk in the stomach or not? Look for any abnormalities, congenital abnormalities that may not have helped the child survive. Okay? And then you come up with a conclusion. So I think we'll, uh, we'll end here for now. Inshallah, we'll continue with the rest of the lecture tomorrow. Thank you.